Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. I'm joined by my first guest today. We're looking at equipping young professionals for the future world of work. And today I'm joined with uh, joined by OEME at David Bigbe. She is a senior associate at Templars and she's also the vice president um, of the section of business law Nigerian Bar Association. Thank you very much for joining us. Nigerian Bar Association, <laughs> section of business law. We're well, vice chairman of the Young Lawyers Committee. You're the vice chairman. <laughs> how, did, how did you get how did you get into that position? Did you have to contest? Well, for I was it? nominated. Oh, beautiful. I was nominated. And um, it's been a very good experience. I've done that for the past two years. Um, I've had fun. It's taught me a lot. Okay. And I'm grateful to everyone, to the SBL. Or, and the, the yeah. section on business law is currently yes. ongoing. Yes. Well. What would you say are some of the lessons? Because you're a young professional as well. Mm -hmm. What would you say are some of the lessons that you've learned that have helped you get to where you are in your career path? Okay. So it's not just about the work. It's about how you manage people. I've learned a lot that work has to do with emotional intelligence, a lot of the soft skills, personal management, organization, organization, organization. I could say that. 10,000 times. A lot of the errors that I've made professionally have, have come up because I probably wasn't as organized as I should have been. And so I am still learning. And, and we all are. Yeah, and it's, it's a journey. I, I think a lot of people also have to know that you don't put yourself under pressure. Because when you start out, you think, oh, I need to achieve this by what's your five-year plan, all those questions that they ask us, what's your 10-year plan? And then you put your plan, and then just one thing gets everything messed up. So um, to keep learning along the way, but really get the people management right and get your organization right. I think those are the major lessons for me. Wonderful. Let's talk about, you know, let's go into the meat, meat of our topic. Mm -hmm. We're looking at equipping young professionals for the future world of work. Mm -hmm. If we must keep up with modern best practices, you know, we have to put in extra work. We have yeah. a lot of things that have some played, you know, at a, that make us play at a disadvantage, if mm -hmm. I may say. So what would you say are some of the major challenges that young professionals will face in Nigeria? Hmm. That's a very tough question, but let me start with how we are structured. So... We usually get that conversation started when people are done with school. So you've gone to school, you've learned to be maybe a lawyer or a doctor. And that understanding of what the world of work is doesn't start to hit you until you start work. Nobody goes into a battle and starts fighting or learning to fight in the battle. I mean, we see the likes of some yeah. they so, training Yeah, exactly. From a very young so age. the training has to start from childhood, not even maybe secondary school, which is what you see some people doing now. It has critical thinking, is a very important skill. So, from even, I would say, from kindergarten, you need to start training children in the games they play, in the things they do. All of that has to start then because it also affects how people process. I mean, Nigerians are able to adapt anywhere they go in the world. But if we want our own system to work, if we want our own um, human resource portfolio as a nation to work, we need to change the curriculum for education, critical thinking, personal management, organization, all those soft skills that people start to learn from maybe a training that they do at work. They need to start to put themselves together from day one. Okay, now I think it would, it would change everything. That's a, that's a good idea and yeah. something that we need to infuse in the nearest future. Mm -hmm. So let's address now the present, current situation, the current reality. How can we make do of this, you know, this seemingly um, challenging situations? How can we thrive despite all of this and position ourselves for the future world of work? Yeah, okay, so I'm speaking from the perspective of a young professional and if I had one sitting in front of me, um, I would say everything is not money because most young professionals think that um, the conversation you need to have once you're thinking about work is how much are they paying me. How much they're paying you is not the value that comes to you or that you give because it's a two-way relationship. You're putting something on the table. Someone else is adding. But so the word, the scientific word that comes to mind is symbiotic. So it's a symbiotic. So you have to look at it from that point of view. What are you putting on the table? What are you getting in terms of value? If it's just about money, you would lose the plot. It won't work. So it may work today. I may be getting 50,000 today and it's fine. And then I get married and 50K can't even take me anywhere. So, and then also, what are you looking at in terms of what the skills that you have now? How long can they last? Automation is taking everything 
<laughs> as if AI is coming we, from we have jobs. exactly we have a digital world now. How does that play up there? Uber is working, and then some people are thinking, "Oh, I'm a driver now. Uh, I'm going to, I, I love driving. Ten years. You can have a ten-year plan with just a driving skill because." We're going to have self-driving cars in a few years, right? In some countries, it's already the same. That's what's happening there. So you need to look at the long-term plan for that skill that you have and how you can improve yourself to be valuable. Um, studies have shown that a lot of the relevant skills will revolve around creative thinking, um, uh, emotional intelligence, because, but even machines are learning now. So you have to just think about how you can differentiate yourself from just typing, sending email, they are extinct. So critical thinking, I go back there, is something I think is very, um, it's, it's missing in the links that we have in the world of work. So if we put that in, I think it would take us further. It would prepare both young professional and the organizations themselves. Okay, you are, you are sitting before me, I'm a young professional, mm -hmm. and I'm coming to you and telling you, you know, I feel like I don't have that skill of critical thinking. Mm -hmm. How can I nurture this? Books. Books. That's day one. Books. There's so many books on. So the first time someone said to me, you don't think, I thought it was an insult. But I found out that it wasn't an insult. It was actually truth. So I started to read books on how to think. And it helped me a lot because... In different things, challenges, work brings up different challenges. And some of the challenges I face, there is no step one, step two that I can refer to. I have to use my logic to create something. So sometimes at work, there's no precedent. You are the creator. And that's where a lot of people fail. And if you find someone who's a high flyer or is, who is being distinguished, it's because they're able to thrive in that space. They're able to do stuff outside the ordinary. They're able to create, even on a simple memo, or a simple email, or a simple communication with a client. It's customer service, but you're creative in the way you do it. You're doing it differently. You add something. There's a personal vibe or spice, as they say, that you bring on the table. So how you get that by reading, studying people. People have case studies. Um, there's so many. Um, research schools that have case studies on this kind of content, you read that as well. And then mentors also help. I, I know very well that um, sitting with older people who have dealt with some of the challenges I face and just listening to them has helped me. And usually those challenges come when you're not even watching. So it helps me and I'm able to even do better than them and go and boast after <laughs> <laughs> that I beat your record, you know, so that's very important. So reading books, engaging people, and just learning. All right, you know, you, you've really explained this, but there are many people who will tell you, I don't like to read books. Uh -huh. Thankfully, we're now beginning to, reading is now becoming cool again. People mm -hmm. want to snap books they're reading and post on Instagram because everybody wants to put hashtags. And they're not finished reading. Because, <laughs> that they're not finished reading. How many people are on this table that we are shaking? <laughs> Plenty, <laughs> including <So>, me. <laughs> but the thing is, everybody's busy. Everybody's mm -hmm. trying to keep their head above the water. You're trying to deal with Lagos traffic. For those in Lagos, for those of our viewers in Lagos, those outside Lagos that don't have to face traffic, you're blessed. Please do not throw away that blessing. Treasure it. Traffic is not a respecter of man. We are trying to deal I with agree. all of this. And then you still have to plug in reading. Are there creative ways to go around hmm. this? Okay, yes, they are. So, they're audiobooks. So, as you're driving, as you're having your bath, you can play those. They're paraphrased books, which are books that just speak to the meat of maybe it's a 250 page book, but then the paraphrased book would be like 20, 70 pages. So, it makes it easier. Um, going for conferences. And being around people who are speaking about that particular subject. So um, even these days, you see on Instagram, you would see lots of conferences or simple conversations about a topic. So if it's in an area that you're interested in, for instance, okay, I am a farmer. I want to know about agricultural um, processes. I want to know what's new, the technology, the trends. Look for blogs that have that content. Trust me, reading just one page or one post can take you very far or can 
and then going to areas where you have maybe um, conferences, symposiums. The government is doing a lot in that area. They're educating people. Organizations are doing the same. So if you're looking for it, you'll find it. If you are looking for it, you will find it. Yeah. Avail yourself of all the opportunities that are bound mm -hmm. on Instagram. Rather than just going on certain blogs to look for what's happening, just look for areas of your life that you have decided that you're, you're not really matching up to expectation. Mm -hmm. And work on yourself and be the best version of yeah. yourself. Thank you so much, Yemi, for joining Thank us. Thank you. And I, I know you're it. also a writer for the Business Day. Yeah. You dish out lots of information for people who want to follow you and keep up to um, keep up with all the amazing work that you do. Mm -hmm. How can they do that? Okay, so read my column on business day um and then from time to time i i share content live content i do videos on I, instagram yes on instagram so how can they follow you on instagram? okay underscore oyeyemi 90 so let me break it down underscore o y e y e m i nine zero all right and that'll be all for oyeyemi we hope that with this few points of art we've been able to convince and not confuse you <laughs> that you need to position yourself for the future world of work to enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.